So hello everybody. Uh, today I'm going to to talk about mainly about uh, function layer. So yeah, I'm, I'm Jerome Rado from the World from Research, and here you see I tried to to follow all the bad advice to to make a slide. You know, like changing the font size and striking stuff. Why well, it was just uh, to because yeah, things changed recently for the design of uh, this thing that was supposed to be first named the net function, and finally it will be a uh, this function net function will be an internal stuff which which will be called function to net and the real stuff would be function layer okay and it's new in the new version of mathematica so actually before starting with a function layer i would like to start with a, like an overview of what's new in the new version for the neural network framework so first uh, we continue efforts uh, that that uh, some efforts that had already started before of stabilization and of uh, bug fixes, and uh, it's of course to be continued. Uh, and we have extended several stuff to unlock uh, yeah, more deep learning approaches, so things to train neural networks. So in the previous ver version, it was NetGAN operator, uh, which was a uh, yeah, symbol to uh, which 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 enable to use of, uh, to um, train, sorry, uh, generative adversarial network in a user-friendly way. And then I think that the, for the next version, the, the same kind of stuff will be the, the to, uh, to make it easy for people to do reinforcement learning, because for now it's possible, but you really have to trick the framework to do it. So we would like to come up for the next version of similar stuff for uh, as GANs, but for reinforcement learning. Okay, and then, uh, so concerning the extension of our framework to support more and more uh, techniques of uh, uh, deep learning. Uh, so one thing is to train with uh, random uh, numbers. So we have introduced a, a layer called random array uh, layer, which uh, can generate random numbers. So for example, here uh, I generate uh, I build a layer ask, asking to generate numbers uh, following a normal distribution, and I ask to generate uh, three numbers each time I am evaluating the the network. So you see the this is a special layer that takes no no input. Uh, sorry, yeah, the the visual is a bit small here, but that's the the template. Uh, I cannot do anything about this. Uh, so yeah, you see it. It's random. So it is sample. Sorry, three numbers uh, following a Gaussian distribution. And uh, also, we have extended the support for integers in the new version. Like it was, or a bit new in the last version that we support integers, and now uh, there is more and more support and consistency on it. And uh, with random layer, you can also uh, generate. Uh, so you don't see. Maybe you don't see here, but. It, it's a layer here that generates indices. So here it's only vector of real numbers. But here, this uh, this layer, you see, ah, actually, yeah, I forgot. This layer uh, not only generates indices, but here you see that there is a, an argument. Actually, it's a function, not a distribution that I use to construct the layer. And it means that this layer will take some inputs, which will give uh, some parameters of the distribution. So in this case, it's the maximum of uh, discrete uniform distribution. And for example, uh, ah, sorry, I had the command here. If I ask to, to generate an, uh, integers between 10 and 100 and 1,000 and 1,000, you see, uh, it's possible with this kind of layers. Uh, there was also recently a, a generalization of uh, dropout, uh, the dropout layer, so it's, it's a layer uh, very common for uh, training to improve generalization uh, during training neural networks. And uh, it consists, uh, uh, you see in this stuff in, in uh, so, so basically the input was a, a random matrix of uh, random numbers and then drop out just uh, uh, apply a random mask and then the mask values are, are turned off to, to be zero, you see here. And what has been introduced recently is that you can, uh, before, you, you had only this output, uh, but now you can ask for the binary mask that was used to produce this output. So it's also, uh, it's a similar stuff that you could get with a random array layer and, uh, and uh, for example, a discrete into uh, zero and one, let's say, right? Yeah, you do this. Uh, see, I, I do this to my random array layer. Ah, here, yeah. The thing is that the output is not specified yet. That's the special thing when the layer has no output, is that you, you have to specify the, 
the output size. Uh, sorry, the copy paste is not very well working. Uh, so if I want to generate three numbers, okay, I, can, I could generate a matrix like this, right? If I put here. So yeah, this also, the size specification of the framework for now, it didn't change, like it's some simple shape specification, right? So yeah, anyway, it was a parenthesis to say that what you have the binary mask here, you could get it with one domain array layer, but what is interesting here is the same mask. And in some approaches, I won't enter into the details, but in some papers, it would be useful to use the mask of dropouts uh, to do something else than just the dropout. Okay, there were some uh, several uh, generalization also of symbols or renaming, uh, like the for the encoding string, so for neural networks that process uh, text in natural language processing. For example, it was a uh, this encoder. So you see now in the new version, it will say it will tell you that it's been deprecated and renamed. So you see now before it was um, named BP subword tokens. So yeah, to quickly to talk about uh, this uh, uh, this encoder is an encoder where, where you pass a string, and uh, yeah, it it gives you indices. Out, as output, yeah, it's it's a classical stuff to to process text, but it cut the what is particular is that it cut the text into sub words, uh, which we cannot see in my example. But anyway, uh, yeah, to say about the extension that uh, now it's sub -word tokens and with the method BP. So you see, before it was in the name, now it's it's only a method, and then uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, maybe it's not built in the documentation because I'm working. So yes, I'm working in things in the new version that are uh, yeah, not all the documentation is not built, and in beta version, uh, uh, yeah, there are some bugs here and there, which will be solved, of course, uh, in one month. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is the new. So this is creating basically the, the same uh, subword tokens, which has uh, many options. And uh, with these encoders and with also the extension of some other layers, uh, some details here and there, we are able to import many models. So yeah, here is the page of the, the models speci specialized into text processing. Uh, and you will see that there is a lot of BERT and GPT. So these are all the, for those who know deep learning or natural language processing, uh, yeah, these are the last models who are very fancy and who are doing a buzz, right? They are, they are able to generate text that is similar to, to a text written by a, a human, uh, and sometimes with impressive uh, performance. Yeah. So yeah, for example, so if we look on this web page for uh, yeah, BERT and, and GPT, you will see that, the, uh, yeah, the, there are many, right? There were only two in the previous version, and now we imported uh, more version. And actually, yeah, we, we, we did not, like, like there are many more in the literature, of course, and we did not import all of them. It would be useless, uh, I think. Yeah, so we try to focus on the efficient one. Uh, so that is to say the one that computes uh, the thing into a reasonable amount of time, because the problem with this kind of model is that the first one, okay, we are well performing, but, they were taking too much time to answer and sometimes too much memory and too, too much uh, capacity. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, coming back to the new things. <clears throat> and now we are entering finally the category of the, uh, of this presentation with a, a similar topic, uh, which is presented by Matteo just after me, uh, which is compiled layer. So the goal of compiled layer is to compile any Wolfram long language code into a, MXNet uh, neural network, and MXNet is actually the core uh, at the core uh, of our framework for now. Like it's the the main third party tool that we are using. Maybe we'll use uh, others in the future, but for now uh, it's the main. And uh, yeah, it has the property that if you can code your function into C++, then uh, you can have a custom layer into MXNet basically. And with the new version, with 12.2 comes also a lot of progress uh, in the compilation progress, in the uh, compilation, uh, uh, sorry, project. Uh, and so we took advantage uh, also uh, in the neural network framework of these uh, uh, advances. 
and now you uh, so we are introducing compile layer so the, the first version will be uh, a bit experimental we will tune the design and also the capacity of automatic differentiation like it's the the the, the main uh, it's the graal uh, i think the, the automatic differentiation of the any function of the language like uh, it's the goal of uh, the end goal of this is that yeah, you can enter your function and just it's compiling uh, into C++ into in C++ into MXNet and then we can use it into our uh, language. And that function layer is a bit at, at a different level. So it's also taking the whole from language code. Uh, so the input is uh, the similar, if not the same to compile layer, but it will produce, uh, uh, it will use just layers of, of our framework uh, which are optimized uh, to build a neural network. So the, so the difference is that compile layer is in theory able to compile uh, more things. It should be about, uh, yeah, it, it will be able to compile more things, uh, but it will be slower also. So function layer will compile less things, but more efficiently. And of course, in the future, a function layer will use an internally compiled layer when it's not able to, to compile something. So to do what it can do efficiently and what it cannot do efficiently to do it uh, instead of uh, yeah, failing, <laughs> basically. Okay, so we are going to talk anyway about function layer uh, in, in the second part of, the, of this talk. And uh, yeah, also it's a bit related to the net function uh, project actually, because by doing this, uh, yeah, I, I will, tell again later that we want to improve the consistency between the language and the framework right there has to be a translation between this and this so everything that you should be able to do in the language we should be able to do uh, it with neural networks i'm talking about sorry i'm talking maybe about array processing so everything we can do on arrays uh, operations uh, we should be able to do it with neural networks basically so yeah uh, yeah, a new coat of paint. So, I mean, well, yeah, we introduced new icons, which are, uh, so the first goal was, was that they are more expressive so that the user can understand more what is the network doing. Uh, but in the end, uh, yeah, we are also limited by the size. So sometimes we realize that we cannot express too much. So another important point is that these icons have to be uh, ident identifiable. Uh, right. You have to easily distinguish one from the other. So yeah, we are uh, tuning, still tuning the, the icons, but here, here is a, another, another view of the current state. So for example, here you have a, uh, yeah, funny net uh, from text processing, where here you have some convolutions. So you see some window, so uh, this one will change actually, so you can forget it. But I'm sorry, you see that there is a max, so max is, is clearly written because it's a symbol and it's small, so. So easy. Then uh, this is the catenet layer. Yeah, wait, maybe I try to to increase the size to show you this part. Uh, wait. Uh, so I guess I have to end the presentation mode and to do this. Sorry about this. Yeah, let's do it like this. Okay, so yeah, this is the catenet layer that takes uh, several arrays that stack them together. It, then this is a, a, a ramp uh, nonlinearity. This this is not new. Huh? The linear layer also it is a success uh, icon. Uh, threading layer, yeah, this one we might change also. And after you see uh, when when it's a system symbol, rest must you see it's reason, and then you you don't have to think even neural networks, right? This is the recurrence. Uh, the recurrent uh, icon. So recurrence is when you take the output of the uh, of the network at a given step. Uh, no, the input at a given step and the output at the previous step, and then you combine them. So it's represented here. Uh, yeah, this is a, another example with an image net, where you see also a lot of convolutions and pooling. Uh, yeah, there are also some conventions, like when you see some square, it means that the, there is some learnable parameters. So this is a convolution, for example, uh, with you see some weights and biases. And when it's a circle like this, uh, it has no free parameters. So it is a pooling layer. So both have the same icon, but different shape, because uh, by, by definition, they do similar stuff, like you put the kernel on the, on the image, but one has learnable parameters, not the other. 
Okay, uh, and then, uh, yeah, this is the, another example with a, uh, an initialized graph uh, with uh, some attention layer. This is the softmax also with the mathematical formula, uh, the sum losses, uh, we change the color of it. Okay, now I will demo a net function and explain you the motivation at the same time, actually. Now it's a linear, there is no an hierarchical uh, uh, structure in this presentation, it's a bit linear today. So first, the motivation is to make neural network easy to write, right? So for example, you read a paper and you, you want to implement the uh, intersection over union stuff, which is a loss, right? So yeah, this, uh, because I think that users were struggling with our framework mostly to write loss functions, right? So because uh, most of the time layers are, are commonly used, right? Convolution layer, linear layer, uh, LSTM. We have them in the framework. Uh, all the frameworks have them. There is no problem on this one. But sometimes it's more on structural operations or uh, yeah, doing do loops, this kind of stuff, which would be complicated. Anyway, so we are speaking about net function, make it easy for the user. So uh, yeah, this function here, I could, uh, I, I could write it like this, right? My function. So here I, I write what I see here, if I, if I didn't mistake. Uh, so I define the, the four coordinates uh, of each square. Uh, so there should be eight uh, input. Uh, and I have a function. And now I just have to add in front function layer. And now I don't have a function, I have a special object called function layer. Okay, which has many inputs. So yeah, because here it's my special, uh, you see. Yeah, for those who don't know, it's the slot syntax for uh, input of association, right? Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, function layer, these are my inputs uh, and it contains a net and I can visualize actually the equivalent net graph of this function here which is a bunch of uh, threading layer plugged together, actually, you see, like one area is uh, computed uh, by taking uh, the four coordinates of a square and doing the stuff. The second area are the same. The overlap is mis mixing the two square and then uh, area over, you know, it's just the, the a division basically uh, of the terms, okay. Uh, then yeah, this was just another example here of uh, another function, okay, where you can define, and you can see also that your uh, local variables, your blocked variables, appears as uh, layer names. We will introduce another mechanism to do it, uh, like it's a bit of a hack, as uh, Stephen would say, to do it like this. Uh, I think we will keep it as a convenient, like this, but we will also introduce a more, uh, uh, like maybe the notify symbol to say, okay, here I want it to create a, a, a node. Because what happens here uh, is that, for example, uh, this X here. So yeah, actually I, I use X several times. So this is what, what is misleading and why Steven did not like, and he called it a hack. It's because uh, there was uh, two times, there, there, there was three times even. X, if I do it like this, uh, yeah, sorry, then it doesn't know, uh, yeah, it was this one, I think, yeah, okay. Net graph, uh, okay, so you see this X1 here, uh, it's here, yeah, boom. Uh, so it's taking the input and that's after it's, it's applying a pipeline of stuff, right? Tanaj, I mean, and plus one, which cannot be uh, just, a, just a threading layer because of the mean here, with a, not an element-wise operation. And then you see that the behind this X1 here, uh, there is this net chain of doing the net chain, the uh, Tanash, sorry, uh, aggregation layer to do the mean, uh, and then doing the plus one. Okay. So now uh, why, yeah, just uh, to say, why not net function and function layer? Why, why is it better? Uh, so I think the main argument is that it's a combo package. You have two things inside. You have a net and you have a function. So you can trace back the function, the original function. And yeah, reproduci reproducibility is important in deep learning and it's always uh, very difficult to, 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 to guarantee. 
So I think that it's important uh, to make objects like this that carry a lot the history. That how 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 the how were they make right? How can we make them again right? If uh, okay. So uh, also yeah, you have the net and you can extract. So actually you can. Uh, so here yeah, I, I add this IOU net right, which was actually a function layer, which is not a net. Well, it's a net, right? In a layer, <laughs> but I can convert it to a net graph just with uh, by using net graph. Uh, and actually, this is this is working now for any layer. Like if you do a, a net graph of linear layer, you will see a net graph with the icon of the linear layer, right? So that's a way to to test the icons quickly uh, of the layers. But you don't care because you don't have to test. Okay, uh, so yeah, you can convert to a net graph, and in some cases, uh, some operation, some simple operation, can be converted to a layer. And in this case, uh, so it's with net extract and net, right? Because if you look at this net function, it has two parameters for now: the, the original function and the net, right? So you can extract this net. And in some cases, it's a net graph. In many cases, actually, if your function is complicated, but imagine you you want just the median. Uh, then yeah, you have a function layer, but the net, you see, it's not a net graph, it's a, just an aggregation layer with a median. And normally, if things are not buggy, uh, yeah, the net will always give the same uh, uh, results as the function or the symbol, right? So they evaluate the same. They evaluate the same, okay. Uh, sometimes it's faster. This is still in testing, but I was surprised that uh, sometimes we can be uh, faster than uh, bacteria operations. Uh, and but uh, so you can evaluate, but you can train train a network with it. It means that it will be derivable, etc. So if, for example, here I create a, uh, a net that projects some data into some uh, some spaces uh, where I'm taking the median right with this median net that, that I constructed with a function name of median. Okay, then uh, I want the median to be close to one, so I add a loss to be to minimize the absolute value uh, of the difference between one and the median, uh, and then uh, yeah, I could train this network right. So yeah, I could make uh, my entire network or, or some pieces with function layer, like it's a normal piece of the neural network with all the methods working on them, net initialize, net extract, uh, all the surgery functions also that I won't have to uh, demo today. Uh, okay. And so as I was saying, yeah, you can also trace back the original function, right? And uh, so yes, if you want suddenly to compile not in our language, but in something else and you have another compiling tool, for example, in C++, uh, you can uh, do this with the function. Okay, uh, motivation number two, uh, getting familiar with the Wolfram language uh, framework. Yeah, for the users who do, do not know the neural networks framework, uh, but who know the, the, the language, like, uh, yeah, here I'm uh, mapping, you see some, uh, for example, normalizations. I'm calling uh, on these functions here, the uh, net function and extracting the, the net graph or the layer. And you can see the equivalence. And so you can learn things. You can say, okay, standardized was finally the normalization layer with a scaling level empty list and aggregation level one. Wow. No, but uh, yeah, it simplified the life, but it's uh, it's always the two way around actually, because for me, I I got to know the Wolfram language by the neural network framework. So in my case, it's helped me to, to uh, check the language actually. So yeah, there are many examples. I'm running out of time, so maybe I will rush for the end, but uh, you will have the notebook. Uh, I haven't put it yet, but it will be on the attached to the event. So you have also the distances, uh, right? So here, uh, yeah, many distances, uh, well, can be, well, all the distances can be written as a neural network, right? And if it cannot today, maybe it can be in one day. Look at the break Curtis distance, who produces a, a yeah, a, beautiful hierarchical uh, neural network. Uh, yeah, some structural operation also to flatten transpose. So yeah, this is, uh, I think, useful for the regular user 
who, for example, uh, first, you know, there is not the first layer. To do a first, you have to do a part layer, specification one. So yeah, it would be boring to look at the documentation to find this kind of things. So now net function will help you to, to find this kind of stuff and to learn better about the framework, hopefully. So embeddings, yeah, there is just a unit vector who becomes a unit vector layer. Who this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, maybe I have to do the part. Uh, if you do a part uh, on some numeric array, maybe it's equivalent to some embedding layers. Maybe I have to do some hack uh, uh, in the future to introduce more and more layers. So yeah, of course, not everything is uh, supported and you should have a beautiful uh, error message if it's not supported. And we will fix bugs and uh, not supported stuff little by little. Ah, and the third motivation is the third, uh, it's the last one. Uh, I wanted to, to see it, uh, to quote. So it's, uh, yeah, it creates more for us as a, uh, yeah, developers of Wolfram language to force us to have a consistency between the, the framework and the language. This I already said, right? And I talk about extensions also, like this net function uh, project, it boosted us a lot to extend the layers, like uh, the aggregation layers. Now it can, uh, before it, it could only support the five first, I think. And now we introduce the median, the variance, the standard deviation, the mean deviation, the interquartile range. And there are always some details, like for the medians, you know, that there are, there are uh, several ways of computing the median. Uh, yeah, like the bias and the unbiased way. So we, we, yeah, we had to take care of this kind of stuff, like right, to, to give exact, uh, the exact same results with a function and with the neural network. Okay, I talk about randomness, right, before. So maybe, uh, maybe I, I move back to presentation mode for this uh, aesthetical part that will, uh, that is close to the end. So uh, yeah, here I, so I use random variate, right? To uh, to here to, to add a random mask. Yeah, I just sample one value. It's a gray mask and I apply it to an image. I am showing it uh, here. If I sample th three values, which are my uh, uh, RGB, so red, uh, green and blue co colors. Uh, so here I, I generate a random mask that I add to an image. Uh, and after, yeah, I can play. I can, I can generate some lines of uh, of noise, of colored noise, or a salt and pepper noise. Anyway, all these depending on the shapes I specify into my uh, random variate function. Uh, also, random choice will work with a function layer now. Like we could see, the, can we see the trick here? Yeah, maybe here I, I now have to increase the size. Sorry about this. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is the icon for a random array layer where, where I, uh, it's a discrete uniform distribution. So you see, I sample a, an integer between one and three, which will be my choice, right? Which, which input I take. Uh, and then there is a threading layer with uh, some uh, which, uh, which statement. And then, uh, yeah, maybe now it's a bit too big. Uh, then, yeah, if I uh, call my layer 10 times, so yeah, here I uh, uh, actually, yeah, let's uh, take uh, other values than just one, two, three, but uh, seven, 10, and uh, 13. Okay, so I'm asking, uh, oh, it's never talking 13. Okay, sometimes. Uh, okay, it didn't look uh, uniformly distributed. So, but maybe it is okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, it's a transition to speak about uh, learnable arrays. Also, here I show how to do uh, how to automatically uh, switch between uh, the input, an input, and uh, le learnable arrays, right? Which here I initialize. Sorry, I'm going a bit fast, but I will come back to just to show that here the input is one to three each time one two but i take uh, randomly numbers and i invert them with uh, an array uh, no a scalar sorry that in, i initialize it to minus a thousand so yeah and to do this uh, uh, yeah we introduce a new symbol called net array which is actually an extension of a net shared array oh there is a typo here you see uh, yeah 
sorry, it's not, uh, ah, it's, uh, yeah, I have to click on F1, I guess, or, yeah, net array, okay. Uh, yeah, it's also used as the shell array to shell array, but it's a symbolic representation of an array uh, in the framework. Uh, and so basically, yeah, it can, so it's the way to introduce learnable parameter without using layers in that function, basically. So yeah, time is running out, so you will have to check the documentation of net array to the more. Uh, and also, uh, constant array layer, which was badly named it because it was an array that was can be learned. It's not constant actually, it's just constant in the sense that uh, it's a layer that has no input. So it, it's a layer that produces a constant. Once is learned, it's learned. But uh, but this constant yeah, it was confusing. So anyway, we renamed it to net array layer because uh, actually when you when you call net array in net function, it's uh, it, it's um, sorry converted into a net array layer. Okay, uh, yeah, and there are also some facilities uh, to debug with echo. Like if you put a echo in some functions, it will uh, connect. Uh, yeah, this intermediate output to uh, this intermediate uh, yeah, value to, to an output. So you see here, I put an echo on the sign. It's this one, this echo. Uh, then I put an echo on this uh, expression here, which is a, mainly a plus, so I call it a plus, uh, right? Because echo has, a, has two arguments, uh, you can put a label here. So it's in a, uh, uh, an output with the name plus, uh, and then the same for the tanash here. It's an output with the, the tanash. Uh, yeah, and also, uh, yeah, there is a difference. Where is it about, uh, yeah, for fixed array, you can simply use this, right? So for example, here is a function where I have two input, I compute the, the, the dot product with a third vector, which is fixed, right? And I want, so here I use net array with a given initialization, but this net array means it's like this one, uh, but it, it can be learned. So you see, if I convert to a net graph, you have two net arrays here. Uh, one, one has learning rate multiplier zero. So it's this one actually, which is fixed. And the other has no particular learning rate. So yeah, it's learnable. And we can check by extracting like this. Uh, here I extract at the place two. Uh, so I have yeah, the learning rate multiplies zero with the constant value I gave. Anyway, I'm running out of time. So I hope you enjoyed my demo of uh, net function. Uh, uh, no, it's not that function. I'm not used to it because it was recently. So I hope you uh, enjoy my demo of uh, function layer and uh, invite you to follow the the um, presentation of Matteo now on uh, compiled layer. Thanks everybody.